DIYers, welcome, 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 welcome. This conversation wasn't, it happened last minute, it wasn't expected, but I'm glad that it's happening as I've been sitting here building with this, with this brother, like it's been a good sense of what's to come. Ladies and gentlemen, on your way in here, make sure you hit the like button, but please welcome my guest, Lantana from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi, first of all, how you doing, sir? And I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Nah, I mean, I, I feel like, of course, we welcome you here, but I feel like the appreciation should go back your way because this clip, oh, man, this clip that you did where you spoke really honestly about just observing what's going on around you, I, I think it touched a lot of people and a lot of folks who don't always see eye to eye, especially about music. Uh, I was going to say, would you mind turning the camera just a little bit towards the other way? Because I think it's kind of cutting your face off a little bit. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. You're yeah, that way. Um, but the clip is touching a lot of people. And I want to not only discuss that, but those who maybe were only introduced, including myself, to you as an artist through this clip. I want them to have the opportunity to get to know you. But before we get into that, I want to play this clip real quick just to give people a refresher. And then uh, we'll get into it. Hey, man, y'all know why the vibe be so off in some of the black clubs, man. We really be in there trying to have a good time listening to 30 straight serial killer songs. Like, we really in there trying to have a good time and vibe out to murder music. We in there hypnotized. We damn near all done lost somebody to violence. That's why we all in there on the verge of socking some shit. <laughs> we keep listening to serial killer music. These young mad ass niggas talk about hitting somebody with a switch. Man, 30 clip, slide, slide, slide. Man, we in there drunk. We really hypnotized listening to this devil ass shit. I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't like some of the music, but it'd be like, man, how's we partying, trying to have a good time listening to murder music? This shit is psychopath shit, for real. Like, I mean, it did. We gotta start switching it up, man. Something gotta change, cause that shit is really like, it blow my mind. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I watched this clip pop up on my Instagram timeline. I don't, you know, Instagram is very unpredictable what they want to suggest to me. Cause, cause yeah. a lot of times they'll give me stuff that I'm like, I didn't ask for this or it's stuff yeah. that I'm like, I don't need this in the beginning of my day. This is one of the rare <laughs> moments. You know what I'm saying? When you get something where it's yeah. just kind of like follow you the rest of your day, get, put you in a bad mood. This is Instagram, one of those clips. Right? Instagram, Instagram, right? The algorithm is, and I know they say it's a reflection of you and your, whatever, but I'm like every so once in a while, I'll get a word. This was one of those words that, Honestly, it made my day because um, for a few different reasons. One, I love the fact that this kind of a message was delivered from somebody who was an artist, a current artist, because you don't really get to hear messages like this. That's this honest until after an artist, I feel or a rapper uh, retires, goes in podcasting or, you know, uh, uh, you get this from somebody who never has picked up a pen and understands what it's like to express yourself. So that message being delivered from you in the way that it was, was really uh, an inspiring thing to watch because I'm like, I can say it, even all my artists, and they're going to take it another way. You said it, and I've seen so many people resonate with it. So uh, for those who don't know, Lance, Anna, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I want you to walk us through that day that you made that clip. Man, um, Lantana, man, out of Cincinnati. I've been rapping for a while now. Been on, been on, on label, on labels on RCA and all that, man. I put out songs with Yo Gotti and Bun B and Pusha T and been in the world, man. And I, I didn't been through a whole lot. I didn't been in the streets and been in prison and all of that, man. And seen both sides, of, all sides of everything, man. But. I'm just an end. I'm a positive guy, man. I didn't, I didn't done stuff in my life, but I'm a positive guy for real, man. I like to see everybody just do good, do good in life, man. If anything, right. I want to just see y'all prosper and do y'all thing, right? But that the day I made that, the night before I made that video, I went out to the club, man, and like I just feel energies, man. I get, I just see, I just look around and see everybody thugging so hard, man. Right, right. They just thugging so hard. I was drunk and I, I did a little shrooms. And I could just feel the energy. I'm like, man, why is these niggas so mad? Mm. You supposed to come to the club to be to, that's supposed to be a getaway to have fun from everything, it's right? Like, it's anger. People is mad. Like they may sometimes they don't even be mad though, because I'm the type like when I see somebody mugging the summer, like, what's up, bro? You all right? How you doing? Yeah. Like, oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm straight. 
they don't even they don't even realize that they in there mugging and looking crazy like that. You feel yeah. me? And it just made me think. I woke up that next morning, like after listening to that, the music and everything. I woke up that morning. I was listening to Post Malone. Some Post Malone where he's singing. You know, he's only Post yeah. Malone do that. <laughs> he get in his space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had me there. I'm like, man, that's what I want to hear when I go out, man. Yeah, I want to hear something. He was talking about just man getting drunk, maybe doing a little drug, just having fun. I want to hear you like, let me hear something like this. Mm-hmm. And then it just made me like, I gotta say something, man. I gotta say something because, man, like, what's wrong with us? Why is we in here trying to have a good time listening to Get It Back in Blood? I'm you, saying, I'm in here listening about why I need to go kill the niggas that killed my people. And I'm in here trying to have a good time and escape from that. How did it find a way? I I guess my question, and and this is an open-ended question, but how do you think it found its way to the club? Because there was, I mean, I remember the last time I went clubbing, like I was in my 20s still. I'm 38 now. When I was in my 20s and we used to hitting like Hollywood and Vine or even like just some hole-in-the-wall clubs um, in different spaces or like clubs in Inglewood, there'd be places we would go to and like it would be, like that it was that lloyd era the lloyd and 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 young money and like chris brown slow yeah it was a it was just like the music was made i guess specifically for being female friendly and and making it an environment like you're talking about where you can go and get away uh i wasn't there when the music shifted and those kind of songs kind of got played there why some reason they cater into the killers and to the niggas, like what? Yeah. I don't. I I have no clue why we cater to niggas in clubs. Yeah, mention. I ain't saying just play all out R and B or nothing like that. This is what's what people be getting wrong when I be when I be talking about this. It's other kind of rap music. Mm-hmm. It ain't just one type of rap music. You feel me? It ain't just one type, but it's just like we catering to the thug side of everybody. But yeah. everybody got different sides to them. You feel me? Because, like, females be wanting to hear thug shit, too, but it's other sides. Like, I went out last night, man, and they, like, this DJ, this DJ named Wavy Mo, he playing, like, older stuff, mixing it with new stuff. Mm -hmm. He plays certain singing songs that have all the females singing. Like, man, it's other stuff you can play, but it seems like a lot of clubs, like, they catering to the the dark side of it, and they don't understand why fights breaking out and niggas getting hit with bottles. They don't even understand what we playing, like, you know what yeah, I mean, even nah, back, then, back in the day, like that with, with crunk music. Like, oh, yeah, you know I, remember what I, mean? that. <laughs> I, remember going, I remember going to a skating party when I was young and hearing, fuck them other niggas because I'm down for my niggas. Yeah, yeah. It, bro, you know what I mean? People got knocked out to that. I'm sure. I'm sure because yeah. it was in the music. Like, I mean, everything from, from them, them little John Simps to like even the, the, the voices being used and how catchy it is. I think that's my thing. Like, my relationship with music that is is opposite of the lifestyle that I was brought on. Like I was I lived in a lot of different neighborhoods, right? Some of them good, some of them not so good. But Pops always kind of had my head on straight. He had me looking around mm. and observing my environment and like I would ask questions about why, you know, certain colors wasn't wasn't cool here and why certain politics here in LA wasn't the, it was the way it was. I'd ask my mom, and she had a different experience, right? Like my mom's uh coming up uh, she a uh, professional piano player. She played at Nickerson Gardens. So like her yeah. her point of view with things like mom's is supremely street smart. But uh, that's a God fearing Christian woman. But her perspective yeah. gave me some some fresh point of view that was like, I know a lot of my peers did not have the same opportunity. So I would just observe. But when I came up, I felt like even the gangster music that was in 90s and even to a certain degree, early 2000s, it didn't feel like so uh, evil. Yeah, well, it, I mean, people can. We, we made the argument. We was having a conversation about, you know, some dipset music and everything we were talking about. But, like, I'm talking about more in detail, like, the mind, the senseless, the mindless killing. Like, I just kill I just kill because I feel like it. I woke up with it on my mind type shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to op. I want to smoke somebody. Like, look at, like, it's to the point where I'm looking at kids that teenagers who, you they, they will say it flat out. I'd never forget that interview I saw. And uh, this is just for me. Like, I don't want to put any names in there because I know obviously you have relationships with a whole lot of people. But from my point of view, I've seen uh, Slim Jesus talking to Vlad TV about his song, you know, about him drilling and doing the things he's talking about doing in the music. And he straight up said, I don't live that lifestyle. He's like, it just I just make the music. When I saw that, I was like, is this the first time that I hear a rapper admit that they not about that, but they make the music because that's just what they like? To me, I'm like, is anybody else seeing a, the danger that that could, that could present? 
Bro, listen, man. The, I man, you know, it, another thing that brought me to this whole topic, bro. I, I I got this look, this young boy that lived close to me. He he's twenty. When I met him, he was like he was a TikToker. Like he did TikTok dances. Right. He was like a pretty boy, put color in his hair. Then he started changing the music he was listening to. Like he was listening to this artist named Zay Osama. And mm-hmm. Not even to, to put him out there, or nothing like that. But like I was listening to it with him. Like we just play, I played two K with him. And I was listening to it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, every song he talking about killing people. Every song, yeah, every song, the whole album. He had a song called "Fuck My Cousin." Mm-hmm. I killed my cousin, Damn. play with me. I killed my cousin, and it it was just going crazy. But like to bring it back, my the young boy, like he just started changing. He, I seen him change in like one year. His his Instagram post, he's posting guns. He mm-hmm. wearing black. He got on face masks and shit like that. And I'm like, bro, what's making you like, yeah. man, that shit can change you. That shit can change you, bro. Now, coming that up, shit- yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent. I, I want I want you to speak to some of the things we were talking about off camera in, in that coming up, I mean, you know, uh, I'm not sure your age. I'm 38. But coming up in, in, my, in my period, like, there was music that just sounded really, really good. And even yeah. when the topics wasn't on point, even when it wasn't relatable for me, I still would listen because I'm like, this shit is catchy. The music yeah. is sounding amazing. It's soulful or whatever the case may be. It didn't It didn't feel like, it felt like there's a rhyme and a reason for all of it. So there was like yeah. a justification for why things are the way they are. Uh, as, that's, as that shifted along, I guess uh, my question for you was coming up, did you have the same perspective or this is something that came with with time? It, you know, everything going to progressively get worse, man. Sure. And I be telling people, like, the only difference between generations really is the Internet. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you got people, like, right now, you could, like, when I, I'm like, like my young boy, you could really get on YouTube University and you learn how to be a gangster. Like, and watch, That's like, crazy. these videos and watch documentaries on yeah. films and stuff like that. But when I was young, I, I don't know, man. It did something, like. I would be lying to say some of that music did make me feel like like want to want to be tough and stuff like that, right. but it just had more. It was more. It was more a little in depth, and it wasn't so everybody couldn't just have an album out back then. True, true. Everybody the barrier to entry was different. Yeah. Everybody put a song and a video out. You wasn't just having no video back in the day. Yeah, like it's just so it's the access. We this just an access to more people. Like the filter was a little bit different back then. Yeah, that, that's what. That's what I feel like it was. And then everything will always progressively get worse. Like the guns is different now. Yeah. And you know what oh, I mean? man. Social media, the internet, man. The internet make everything different. But it was more get money stuff, too, man. I remember listening to Jeezy as a young boy, like 18, and he had this song talk called Hypnotize. Mm-hmm. But he was like, Hypnotize, you a hit. Hypnot- now I command you niggas to get Good money. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Like, he had songs like Don't Get Caught. Yeah. It's like, me, but now it's like it's like man, die, kill, See, die. I, you know what I mean, there's, there's and then a, them older people, them older people probably could have got through to us because they were saying the same thing we saying mm-hmm. now. They could have got through to us, but they was coming from a judgmental type. I'm like, I'm not judging no young yeah. kids because I understand. Like what I told you off camera, like if making this kind of music could help you get rich and get your family rich and out of the hood, mm-hmm. I, I understand why you would do it. I understand why we're like, man, because the want to get out of poverty, bro, is like, that's a strong want. Bro. Right. Like, who wants to stay poor? And if I could do this instead of working a regular job, I could get rich off if I just start rapping like this. Yeah. I understand it. Like, I'm not judging them, but I'm just saying, like, we got to try to look at the effect that it's having on mm-hmm. people. So let me ask you this. Speaking of that generation, I'm sure with all the love that a post like that receives, you don't get to, to 800,000 viewership on that that Instagram. And I know it went viral on a few other accounts. I mean, it went, the message went viral on my YouTube video. You don't get to that without having a little bit of pushback. What has been some of sort of the pushback, even though it's being delivered by somebody who understands what it's like to be an artist, to express themselves, who understands the lifestyle? What has that kind of been like from your perspective? And from going through the comments, most of the pushback been like weak as hell. Like, <laughs> hell. Nah, it's just it's just entertainment, bro. Y'all oh, y'all can see that it's entertainment, then y'all just dumb. Yeah. That's somebody who ain't even taking the time to even really put thought to it. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to. They don't want to admit. They don't want to admit something, or they want to go against the grain. They like, man, everybody is not super strong mentally. Everybody don't have to. 
emotional intelligence exactly. to even you feel me like to if you like it's a lot of people that's like mentally like real followers and most people are followers it just mm -hmm. is what it is most people don't go with the crowd you know what i mean unless you tell unless somebody with a strong enough voice tell them like wait a minute think just think a little bit yeah just give it give it give it a little bit more time and, and, and a little bit more thought like you know what i mean that's just and you, you know you have them people that just want to be like just go against they like oh, oh he only saying that because or he only like oh I, I, I've been said that. I, I, he, he, I've been. It's not the that. time. Everybody, That's not the time. Because you know what? Look, 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 look. Lantana, I caught some of that heat on my end too. When I put that video up, there's like, there's yeah. like, there's like folks who are like, thank you. Genuinely, you could tell it comes from a good place in their heart. They're like, thank you. I didn't have a son that's been murdered in these streets, or I've had a yeah. friend, or I've had a brother, and they're like, I, I, I understand the expression, but I also understand hearing this makes me feel a certain type of way. And there's that. Then there's also the artists who are like who don't talk about that, who are like, yeah, let's have more balance in what's going on and what's accepted. Then there's a whole nother crowd that I'm like, I can tell they hated rap from day one. It's the people who are like, you know, they put a C in front of the rap and call it crap. That's what they do. Like that's their, that's their corny yeah. way of trying to push back. So I see that. And there's some energy where I'm like, I feel like the tie's changing, but then I see some, some people are just trying to like beat down the music, like a pinata because it's convenient. So we're catching yeah. we're catch, I'm sorry. Do you have a response that you want to say with that? I was just about to say with with that man, you got some you got some people, you got some people that's older and they know better, but they don't want to speak on it because a lot of older people want to still appeal to young people. Mm. They don't want out of they don't want to seem out of touch. They don't want to seem like they really. So you got like people that know better, but they don't want to seem separate from the crowd. Yeah, they don't want to. They still want that acceptance from young people. When really you supposed to be the older you get, the more you supposed to lead. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And not from a judgmental standpoint. And then, like I told you off camera, with, with the people that hate rap music, man, when you really could put some thought to it, you got to understand why they would hate rap music. Yeah. You feel me? Because from, from, from what you see from it, what you see from it, like, if you, like, say say you never, you never, uh like, heard rap music and they sit you down and play you some of the videos, like, some of the, some of the more, the raw videos where it's, like, young dudes jumping around with guns. Yeah. They talk about yeah. killing people smoking dead people and most of the people that they talking about they smoking is teenagers mm -hmm. they talking about smoking a dead teenager you yeah. feel me yeah like this is babies you know what i mean like so i understand why somebody could hate that like I, mm -hmm. I do you feel me even though i don't hate it you know what i mean i'm just an understanding type of person I, so i ain't one of them people like when you say something oh i hate that i, I want to know why you would hate it i'm trying to yeah, look at why that. you would I'm still growing in that department. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm still growing because when I see this baby that I love called hip hop that I, you know, I, I came up and I saw an era of a De La Soul and an N.W.A. Like I remember reading. I didn't know about it at the time because I was too young, but N.W.A. went on tour with Fresh Prince. Like make that yeah. make sense in today's time. That's crazy, right? So when yeah. you see that, you knew that it, there was a there was a way for it to coexist. You knew there was a way for um, the culture as long as it wasn't being kind of like I guess monetized by entities that that don't really care about that. Um, I guess, but them people, but them people, them people also only look at the worst of it. True, I keep telling true. It true. ain't just gangster rap. It's a lot of different. You got other kind of rappers. Yeah. You know what I mean? But negativity is just what draws people. Like they 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 won't look. They won't look at the J Cole and the Kendrick and the other people. It's a dude named Nick Grant. It's a lot of people yeah, that's Nick hard. Grant is fire. That they don't rap like that, you feel me? Yeah. But it's like they gonna go to the to the worst of it, to you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But they ain't thinking. I you gotta think like me. I'm thinking like where these kids is coming from mm -hmm. and what's on their mind that make them feel that way to make that song, man. When you when you got when you grow up and you have some dead friends, man, it could twist your mind. Yeah. Like when you got like four or five dead friends, like I don't even. I got so many like dead friends that got killed, murdered. Not like just died or a car accident mm -hmm. or a heart attack that got murdered. Man, that could twist your brain, man. Like, I got friends that you like, man, I got friends that didn't seen their friend get killed, like, right in front of them. Like, that shit can really, like, change you, and, you know what I mean, and make you heartless and cold. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm curious, bro, because I know it's easy for us as artists to talk to artists. Artists are going to listen to what we're saying because they know that we have like a level of empathy for what we do in the craft. Yeah. I think a lot of folks felt like my particular video in, in particular was going too hard on the artists and not on the entities that finance it. Like some of the labels or some of the folks who may be kind of like pushing. 
I mean, I, there was a clip where I was reacting to where Meek Mill was talking about um, a label head telling him uh, they'll pay more for yeah. more violent yeah. lyrics. You know, yeah. r- regardless about, you know, what the source of that was, uh, how much do you kind of put the blame in that direction as well? Man, like you could put it on the labels, but man, it's capitalism, man. Mm. Man, it's what make money. People love negative shit. They do. I, like, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. Yeah. If I post, like, if I post something right now telling people have a great day, man, live beautiful, man, that ain't, it might get 10 likes. If I get on there and be like, man, fuck them niggas on the other side. Mm-hmm. Fuck everybody. Shit just fill up. up. It just fill up. The comments just fill up. Yeah. It's like negativity. So if you got to, if you got own a business and you running a business, man, and this is what it's doing it. Of course, and then especially if you're not even of that culture and you're not white, and it's never, and that type of violence is never gonna come to your family. Mm-hmm. These people don't give a fuck. Yeah, you feel me? And then it's e- it's gonna it's easy for somebody not in their shoes to be like, man, y'all should have empathy. But if we was in that position where well, we had that same empathy, you just don't ever know. You yeah. feel me? Because on the record label, you making millions and millions, and you taking care of so many families and so much shit, and this violence don't really come to you. Mm-hmm. Will you even have that empathy? Because it might not. If it never touched your doorstep, you might not. You you like you ain't gonna get the same fuck. You're See, not. And, you and, feel me? It's like and some people like like we're not gonna give a fuck about the same like the problems that somebody some rich man some rich white kids got. Mm-hmm, you're not gonna have mm-hmm. empathy for them when they saying they going through it or they having stress and they want to kill themselves. You're like man, what? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Ain't nothing like what you. You ain't gonna have the people don't have that empathy for somebody that don't come from where they come from. So. It's business at the end of the day, man, and you could be mad, but we all consume it, mm. and that we all consume it, we pay our money for it. Yeah. So, so where do you feel Meek like Mill reposted, Meek Mill reposted it? Uh, post too. Oh, we did. Okay, yeah. Sh- shout out to him. Uh, what do you feel like the solution comes? At least let's start with the artist on the artist level. What do you feel like the solution comes there? Because I mean, yeah, with your I'm... video going viral the way it does, to me, yeah. here's here's just one point of view in this. With your mm-hmm. videos, like, when your videos go viral like that, it's not the first time I've heard a message like that that I'm like, damn, usually that's barbershop conversation. Usually mm-hmm. that's not stuff that kind of lead a house. It's so mm-hmm. dope to see it in a in a public place where it can be spread and folks can have now, by the same thing that's influencing them in a negative way, this can possibly mm-hmm. plant a seed in the other direction. With the time mm-hmm. like now where we have so much more leverage because of the social media, because of online, uh, what do you think that us as artists can do? What do you think the solution is? Man, I know that's a heavy geez. question, but <laughs> hey, I, ain't got to, I ain't really got to no solution, man. All I, my my solution is speak in my mind mm-hmm. and stop trying to not look lame. Speak what's on your mind, quit yeah. like you know what I mean. If it's in your heart, like man, speak was be be genuine, man. Be genuine, man. Be be genuine about what you're doing. Like, don't be like, oh, they gonna fuck with this. Mm-hmm. Try not to make music, but. Then again, how I'm gonna say that when somebody trying to get rich trying out to get here, their money off of it, yeah. don't make you feel me. I don't, I don't really know because it's deeper than the music. It's really shit going on out here in this world, man. We really like. I just be trying to spread my little positivity because I know it might touch a few people. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But man, niggas got to get tired of niggas dying, man, and getting killed. That shit right there. That's the message. I've been, I've been like on my page, man. Like I be telling like. I be trying to push this to the young people. You can be a solid, real individual mm-hmm. without being a street nigga or a murderer. You mm-hmm. don't have to be none of that, and don't ain't nobody gonna fuck with you if you just be solid who you is. I'm trying to push that. Yeah. Cause like, man, don't nobody like. I don't like, man. I'm not no like. I'm not none of that shit, man. Mm-hmm. I have been a certain kind of way in the past, but I ain't none of that. But that don't mean nothing. Nobody's gonna. I'm gonna defend myself to the end for anything. But right. I'm not trying to bring negativity people don't be understanding what murder do listen when you murder somebody and take somebody out of their family you changing so much shit man mm-hmm. people be killing bread you when you kill a breadwinner in somebody's family or somebody that's getting that kind of love man people got to start thinking about what murder really do to families mm-hmm. man like this shit fuck it up man like generation generational just, yeah it's generational man that shit a curse man like my brother just got killed in, in December. Man, I got we gotta check on his mama. We gotta check on his son and his yeah. daughter. We gotta deal with our own we gotta we gotta deal with our own grief. 
man, that shit, man, that shit changed our whole family. Like it yeah. changed whole families, man. Like we got to stop looking at life so goddamn like it's nothing. Like and people all, it's always gonna people, people be people that die, but it can't be like so, so callous and so like man, no feelings towards it. Like man. Yeah. But I, cause I didn't been there. I didn't been there when I was young, feeling like all them niggas died, fucking what they did, shit, they mm-hmm. did. But, but nah, man, hell nah. No, it, it, at some point, the, the the cycle gotta break, and I and I feel like it's voices like yours, bro. Like your voice, even even listening to you right now, explaining the things that you're explaining, putting that in combination with the video that I saw, is so powerful because it's relatable. It's not over the top. It's not asking nobody to do something that they can't see right now from their POV. It's like Dog, start right now with which with the next decision that you make and do something with the skill that you have. And that's why, like, on my end, the majority of my audience is independent artists and music producers. And I speak to them, and I had a homie, like, pull me off to the side because at first I was getting ready to go, like, full rage on the music music industry. I was like, man, fuck all this shit. Like, they killing folks off. They got, like, because I used to get so pissed off when I see a rapper die, and I'm like, how the fuck does a label have a rollout ready for the death? Like, how do you already have the place of funerals at the TV channel that it's going to be on? <laughs> he dying. These people look, yeah, man. Yeah. Black, they ain't even look out like, oh, it's the lab. We blame the music industry. Listen, every industry you could be in, if you was a fucking plumber, mm-hmm. every industry got shit, man. It don't matter what yeah. industry it is. People talk about the music business and Hollywood. Like, man, listen, it's some co-workers in the factory right now that's ready to kill each other. You mm-hmm. feel me? That's but, true. Like, it's true. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't, it's not the music industry. It's the environments that we in. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta tap into that first. Is what you're saying. Music, music is like our therapy. So people, some, a lot of people are just rapping what they going through and right. expressing what they seeing and feeling. Like, know what I mean, like, it's like, man, it's fucked up. But like, damn, man, you you give one young person, man, a couple million dollars and he rapping like that, man, ain't no time telling mm. how many lives he changed in his hood. True, Ain't how true, many change like true. change? I don't really, bro. So I, I be I be conflicted. Bro. No, I, I get know, you. Bro. I get you. And, and and the only reason I bring up the industry because I think you make a valid point is because the 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 people who ultimately benefit off of it after an artist passes away. It, to me, you just explained it in a really brilliant way. In that it's the same thing as a job. Like whatever job that you giving your all until you die, gonna replace you in a week. Yeah. It's the same thing with any job, right? But I think with I got the message, like I said, uh, one of my homies pulled me to the side. And he was like, if you go full that direction, the people you're trying to reach are not going to listen to you. So he said, listen. he said, you got to go find where they're hypnotized by using your words, where they're hypnotized by and then speak. Let them speak for it. So then I started doing these reaction clips because my channel for the longest, I didn't want to like react to nobody. I want to make original content. But yeah. as I started doing this, it started to introduce me to, to folks like yourself. And I love that because it's like the universal language, no matter who you are and where you grew up, is authenticity. People can yeah. feel that. They can see that on you. They can see how you treat everybody else around you, all that good stuff. But that is something that resonates where here I am delivering this message to independent artists. You were delivering it to a, probably a whole nother audience and everybody resonates with it because it's real and it's authentic. So uh, please continue to keep sharing your voice because there's nobody else, nobody else from your POV that is doing that, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing it, man. It really, it really like, man, I be having to just, I be wanting to give, like, make people know that I ain't Martin Luther King. I ain't Malcolm X. <laughs> None of this. I'm a real person Yeah, that see this shit. They see it because people be seeing it, but they be want to act ignorant to it because it's like, man, ignorance is just, man, that shit just be bliss. It be bliss for a lot of people. Like, man, I don't, I don't give a fuck, man. I don't care about nothing. But like, man, I see how hard. Like, I didn't see these young people crying at funerals, bro. Mm-hmm. I didn't been crying at funerals. I didn't see this shit, man. This shit terrible. I didn't been in prison. I did four years in prison. That shit suck. Yeah. That's what I'm just trying to tell. All oh, that shit suck. Yeah. Funerals and prison, that shit suck dick. It's the worst. Yeah. That's I a, ain't gonna lie, man. That's the second time I heard somebody like say that this week. It was another another interview clip that's been going viral. And all I'm looking in the comments, I'm just disappointed because I'm like, the first thing somebody want to throw out there, and you don't never know when it's coming from an invisible avatar, right? An invisible person who's like, oh, you just soft. Yeah. And it's like, when you folks say that, I'm like, do you understand that you're continuing the cycle to be what it is? And these are the same people who like, 
For instance, because somebody brought up early in the, in the, in the, in the uh, chat, what about folks who overdose and folks who are kind of like falling victim to the to the to the drugs? And I'm like, I'm like, but the same folks who are like, damn, I miss this artist when you were drugged out is the same <laughs> folks that come around and be like R.I.P. when they die. Man, the same thing like with the killer shit. Like we mm. all cry and hate funerals, but we still celebrate murdering shit. Mm. Like how we sad? This like man, we like that's why I said in the in the original clip. Like we all lost somebody to violence. How we in there? Like we sad, man. Damn, that's crazy. R.I.P. Bro. And then the next day we we bumped into somebody talking about killing somebody. Mm -hmm. That might have been the same song that the killers wrote with listening to to kill your people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel the same song that you listening to. The killers, the people that killed your people, might have been riding that, getting hyped to go kill your people. Right. So, like, man, I said that shit. Like, I'm told somebody, like, man, yeah. ever since my brother got killed, he got killed, he got shot with a switch. He got hit 30 times. Every man. time I hear one of these motherfuckers rap about something with a switch, it it tweaks something in me. Yeah. I wanna, uh, it, it make me, it make me feel away. Yeah. Not to go wanna go kill somebody, but it make me do feel away. Right. So I might be in the club, club and I hear somebody talking about brr, brr, switch and I might man, it might make me it might make me want to cry. Yeah, because it's just not a, it's not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. And I think a lot of people when they put these lyrics together, I think it, I I just I, when I listen back now, like I'm older now and I listen and I'm like, ain't no way we sat in this room, full blown adults. Like I know we got a we got a job and we got to make sure that we deliver a certain product. I get that all day, but it's like, do we never think about like, damn, this shit gonna last longer than I'm gonna be on the, on this earth, and this shit can get into anybody household, anybody mindset at the wrong time. And you know, everybody ain't like you said in the, before this interview. Everybody ain't wrapped too tight. Like everybody thinks that everybody's operating with the same brain, but it's like when you think about eight billion people on the earth, that's eight billion different Earths on the earth. Like everybody got their own perspective, their own edge, their own disabilities, whatever the case may be. You may say the right words and the right hook and the right chorus and that shit. And do you feel any responsibility at that point when when they do that? You know what I mean? Responsibility. People, I understand when people feel like they ain't got no responsibility, man. It's just because you, you, what do you really? You feel me? You mm. do, but do you really have a responsibility to make sure people don't hear this type of shit, man? Yeah. Like, it's just like it, when when it touch your conscience though, that's when you just gotta act on that instead of just keep going forward, man. Cause like uh, you could tell when rappers like Jeezy, Jeezy was one of my favorite like favorite motherfucker. He still mm -hmm. is really, but like I could tell in his career when when he was rapping about dope when he didn't really look like believing mm -hmm. that shit no more. When he was like, man, I'm salty. I'm even saying this shit. But yeah. I'm gonna still gonna say it because they want this. Cause he came out with an al album called Church Off in These Streets, and it ain't do nothing. Mm. Like he wanted to go the other way. So, but right after that, he went right back to Pyrex cooking. But I could tell that ain't where his heart is no more. To to. But he's yeah. still pushing because he like, man, this is what they want for me. Cause be like, man, I want that old Jesus. Yeah. How the fuck stop saying y'all want that old something, man? When niggas grow up, you gotta grow up. I'm going to think like a 20 year old when I'm 35. Facts. I'm going to think like a teenager when I'm a grown adult with kids and shit. Yeah. People, the people act like you, like, how is you going to stay that same? Like, it's like with the gang banging shit. Man, you got to think a lot of the gang banging rules came from people that was teenagers. Mm, so, you, man, talk nigga, about it. Talk about you it. You got people that's 40 going off the rules that teenagers made. <sighs> You know what's crazy about the rules that some kids made. You gotta yeah. what, what the fuck is we talking about? Lansana, not 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 to not to hijack that topic, but you know what's crazy? I feel like as a society at large, that's yeah. happening with cancel culture. When you yeah. think about a 16, 17 year old who pulls up somebody's tweets, now you got this 45 year old man apologizing for some shit he said 20 years ago, and now gotta apologize every place that he go, whenever they bring this up. It's like who started the who started to make it who was the first person that was the tipping point to make it go viral because that person like even i don't know if you remember this some years ago it, it shit gets ridiculous and not to make the comparison but what you talking about because it's just like this real life shit but starbucks had christmas cups and somebody yeah. started the whole shit about oh they're being biased against people who don't believe in christmas and the shit went viral and i'm like that sounds <laughs> like a kid made that up and y'all letting them run your adult rules that's your adult hey. world and you letting the kid dictate that but that's what we're living in. 
when it comes to that cancel shit, you gotta double down, man. Oh yeah, y'all know, <laughs> fuck y'all, y'all stupid. Yeah. I don't care. You gotta double down. <laughs> you gotta double down. You know. That's the only solution. I'm like, like I'm, I'm. You need to apologize. Yeah. You lost. You lost. Look, I, I tell you who the greatest example of it is. I know it's not a popular name. Trump was a good example of that. Every time yeah. he got trying to get canceled, he was double like, that. he's like, double down, man. Y'all it, know, I look. I yeah. that back. I don't mean it right now. Fuck y'all. He said. He said. He said. Uh. He said that you know the 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 system is corrupt. And he, or something along those lines. And they said, why would you say that? He said, because I benefited off of it. Because <laughs> I benefited off of it. What are y'all like, hey, yo. <laughs> what are y'all talking about, man? Look, that shit, be, that's yeah. how you want to get it. Yeah, no, I get so it. That's a whole other conversation, but I want I want to respect your time. That's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. And I, and I don't want this to be the last one, because I really mean that when I said it before the clip. Like, whatever I can help to, to, yeah. to give, whatever advice I have in this content space. I've been here for... A long time in this space and, and, I'm, and I'm you know doing well in this space but i would love to be able to do what i can to amplify your message because i believe in it i believe in what you're doing um the songs that i've been hearing so far i love what i hear and i want to talk about the music now if you don't mind me uh i know we got a little bit of time beforehand before you got to get to this uh to this game or whatnot somebody asked a question in here though and they yeah. were saying that basically how how does one rap as they age was along the lines. Let me see. Uh, Jim Brown said, great topic. As we age, how do we adjust? So I'm assuming this is from the perspective of somebody who makes music. As you age, let me, let me, let me preference with that. As you age, how do you adjust knowing the things that you know? Man, you rap. Listen, rap is no longer young. Rap is fans in rap that's 50 years old. Mm. Rap for the people. Rap for your people. Don't try to rap for no fucking 19 year old if you 38, 39, 40. But if you even if you 30, like if you growing up, rap being a be the be your genuine adult, people gonna know when you perfect. It's the it's like with music, you could just tell when somebody trying to they older and they trying to rap young, they trying to appeal to young people. Don't try to appeal to young people, appeal to people that feel and think like you. Like rap your true self, because if you start, if you start trying to reach people that like you trying to don't try that shit. If it get to them and they fuck with it, they ain't gonna fuck yeah. with it. But if you get in there, it's like, nah, man, them young people, this is what they like to hear. This, as what soon as you in there talking about this is what they like to hear, you lost. <laughs> you messed the whole session up. Well, can I can I double back to a question that you asked earlier? I wanted to expand upon it, but but you was you was cooking. I don't want to get in the, in the middle of that. But you said something along the lines of a stand up individual doesn't have to be somebody that lived the lifestyle that I live, went through the things yeah. that I went. How would you define that? Like, what 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 is somebody that you look at as a stand up individual that's the opposite of your upbringing and, and the things you went through? Man, I I got man somebody who just stand on what they believe in, stand on their word. You know what I mean? They don't like you. Don't have to be like man. I know somebody like this guy. Man, he he, he it's a friend. It's a friend like a brother to me. He he been to college and everything, but nobody is ever just gonna mess with him. Like, he not no street dude at all. You don't mm -hmm. have to be none of that. Like, you don't have to be none of that. That's why it was fucked up with our gender, our culture. We equate being a man with being, like, Reckless. overly aggressive and yeah. tough and, like, like being willing to kill that will and, and all that one shit. That is not what it is. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Being, being a solid person, stand on something, take care of your business. Be a man of your word, shit like that. You mm -hmm. feel me? Walk with some, walk with a certain type of, with a certain type of strength and power, like man. Cause I go, I tell, look, I'd be around, I'd be around murderers and whoever, and be like, man, I ain't on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all not finna, I'm not just cause they y'all talking like how hey, y'all talking. Even if y'all think I'm lame, mm -hmm. I think y'all lame. Yeah. You feel me? I don't like. Don't ever be. Don't be secure in yourself. A person that could be secure in themselves, man. Don't be thinking like, oh, since I'm in this crowd, I gotta act like this, or since I'm in that crowd, I gotta mm -hmm. act like that, man. If you be yourself, man, somebody that's going that's not afraid to be themselves, man. My bad, I get to going and shit. No, you good. No, I, I, and you know, and, and yeah. this, they're probably not used to this because usually when I'm having the conversations, I gotta stop myself from jumping in. But I'm like, I'm learning as I'm listening to you because that first clip that I listened to, I was like. It be days, bro, where I be feeling crazy. Like I say something, and my community will be like, "Yeah, yeah, we we understand that." 
And I'm like, okay, cool, but that's us. Like we we know everything that's going on. But when I see yeah. it come from different sources, when I see folks that like we got mutual friends that 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 are that are on on your page and like resonating with it, liking the post, I'm like, fam, that feels like a shift is happening. That feels like it starts with somebody who got to like they kind of I don't want to say the sacrificial lamb, but I remember Jay Z used to talk about Kanye. He said Kanye the type to go over the mountain while the Indians is you know hitting them with the with the with the arrows. He'll come back and be like, okay, they on the other side. I feel like somebody got to be that voice, and right now you are one of those voices that I'm listening to, and I'm like your message could resonate a lot deeper than a lot of us because of because of how you came up, because of the stories that you have, because of the, the circles that you have had or have. And I think that the more you speak to it, the less that that person who came in and wrote corny or lame, the less they feel yeah. that way. Cause then one day they're going to look up. Cause you know, how, you know, our folks, they won't mm -hmm. co like even the most successful ones. They won't co-sign us until somebody that they respect co-sign yeah. us. You know how that's, that that shit right. goes, right? They go, they start <laughs> that they know in the back of their mind, but they still trying to be cool. Yeah, stop yeah, trying, yeah. Stop trying to be cool and just be you. Be you. you. Feel me? Because you, when you trying to be cool, you look like don't even know it neither. You think you just fitting you right on cool, in. You, <laughs> and you on there mugging, looking crazy, trying to. Oh man, he a sucker. He talking like that. Well, yeah. All right, man. Whatever, man. Yeah. Like, stop it. That shit. But you know, that's just how a lot of people gonna be. Cause a lot of people just want to be contrary. You feel me? Anyway. Like, true. True. Especially, and I, especially and on the internet, man. Internet make it so yeah. easy to be kind. It be things. It be things. I'm like, you do you really could, do you do you really I disagree? Could argue this point. You could you could say. <laughs> I know you say some some <laughs> stuff sometimes. You be like, how could somebody argue this point? I'm yeah. in here talking about the sky is really blue today. Mm -hmm. Man, no, it ain't. The sky, if you think about it this way, is pink. Like, I, people I, find a way to argue. They argue everything. They are, what, you know what I, fi I figured out, too, is that because I came up in the environments I did, like, folks, they see, like, the they see, they're they seeing the best version of Curtis King is what I'm going to say. You're seeing the best version of me. The, the places that I came up with, coming up in LAUSD, where you had to, yeah. you had to have some jokes up your sleeve and know how to defend yourself and be ready on on call anytime because any of these kids yeah. can say some crazy shit. Come, you know what I'm saying? Coming up, coming up in some of these Carson Compton, uh, even later on in, the, in 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 San Bernardino and and Rialto, I didn't been in a lot of places, uh, South LA, all these places. One thing I can say is that when when you're when you're in these environments and I'm trying to figure out what was the original point? What were you just talking about? Because I almost lost the point. What were you talking about before this? You were talking about. I might have lost it. I might have lost it. Yeah, it's all good. My my, my brain is still I was, bringing it all I was together. But about, no, I was talking about stop trying to look cool. Cool, look cool. Just be a that was it. I found them times that you try to readjust to what's going on in the environment, and you try to just fit in. That's when you were the least cool, and that's when you yeah. that's when your message, the the folks that you want to have an influence on. You can never be influential trying to mimic them. You gotta oh, if you want to have in yeah, the the it's crazy. I remember, you know, shout out to Glasses. Glasses would tell me he was like the thing that I love about your music, even though I don't make any of that kind of music, I make a completely different brand of music. He said mm -hmm. is because I know it's authentic to you. And you're yeah. talking about things that, that other folks would feel really uncomfortable talking about, but I'm like, to me, that's just human. Same way as mm -hmm. any story that you shared. That's just human. Because so. I feel like when you perked out, you fuck around and lose everybody. Everybody. And when you could have you could have gained 20 people. Man. 30. If you be yourself and get the people that fuck with you, stop trying to get the people that don't <laughs> fuck with you to fuck with you. Get the people that, there's a lot of people that think like you. Yeah, you bro. don't have to like, like, like you, like me, just you jumping out there and doing some drill music. You're going to lose all your people, but you being yourself, you're going to get your community because it's mm -hmm. the people that, it's the world, it's a big world. Somehow, when it when rap became popular, it made everybody think that the whole world was the hood. Mm -hmm. It ain't. Everybody don't think like that. Everybody man. don't think like you that. Got people like me that like I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to Boosie. I'm gonna listen to that, and then I'm gonna turn on Post Malone. Mm -hmm. He just came out with a new album. Like it's so hard. Like man, I, <laughs> I need I need to hear some happy. I need to hear somebody that's happy. I don't want to hear about niggas going through it all the time and wanting to mad and they mad. Why you want to be mad? I don't. Come on now, life is like I, I, one one thing. Death to tell you I is that is, life, man. You, I mean, man, I'm one of them people like I, I I came to this in my life. This is where I'm at right now because yeah. like when I I did a lot of self reflection when I was locked up, 
And then I just like and I and I understand and I watched people and I, I used to I got a certain energy about myself. I used to sit with people that was in for murder and then I could bring a side out of people to be themselves. Like, man, mm. I really wish God had murderers sit down and talk to me like, man, I really wish I ain't do that shit, man. Wow. I wish it'd have been something else, man. What that I do? Think- can, can, can you can you tell me this? What what did when you recognize that? Because I know, bro, I listen to you and I'm like, you so aware of 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 yourself and so aware of your surroundings a lot more than than most human beings i would say because folks are just kind of going through the motions but you being in that moment when you're hearing that feedback back and you're starting to understand like damn i got a skill for this for letting people yeah. like take off that shield and they feel comfortable yeah. talking to me about that what is how does that make you feel like when you hear you see that kind of feedback coming back to you does that feel yeah, like man, something man, that's a gift or good. Look, it made me feel good because listen, I was I'm I've been like positive, like mm-hmm. but an aggressive positive kind of like right. So when I came home, it took me a minute because I still was like learning and learning and like man, and I was being so positive at one point that people was taking it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So it made me jump back and be ignorant every once in a while to be like, wait a minute, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all taking this the wrong way. I am not any type of hoe <laughs> at all. Like y'all tripping. <laughs> But now I'm at a point in my life where it's like, man, think whatever the think fuck what you, you want. want. As long as you're going to bring it to me. <laughs> yeah, as long yeah. Bring it to me. But I, to me. Yeah. I, still, I still wanted to keep up with that image. Like, man, I'll do something to you. Leave mm-hmm. me alone. But I ain't got to keep up with none of that because I really want everybody to make it home safe. That part. To their family. Don't crash out. Go take care of your kids. Like, yeah. go, go, go get your mama some flowers, man. Go get some pussy do anything <laughs> my brother. by by <laughs> any means just live your life and let me do the damn same life, let me do the it same ain't good, it ain't a good time that's the thing like yeah. we keep on perpetuating this shit it ain't a good time yeah it's hella hard it's hella hardships man like like my son i'm i'm thankful that he not into none of that rap shit at all he ate man he ain't into that shit he just like he i don't know maybe i didn't rub off on him a different type of way he just he ain't on that, but I be telling people, don't be raising y'all kids to be thugs and be listening to this music because mm-hmm. you setting yourself for heartache. You setting yourself Sheesh. up for heartache. If yeah. they grow up and try to emulate any of this thug shit, you setting yourself up for heartache. I still remember how my parents looked when I, my mama, when she found out I went to, got locked up, it was on the news, mm-hmm. she fainted. She fainted. Like, wow. that shit physically, like, fucked her over. Like, man, you setting yourself up a heartache when you send these, when you, when these kids grow up, like, yeah. the shit that it, that it put them through. Like, man, like, I, like, my, my brother that I said died. Yeah. He was on, he, he, a few years ago, he got charged for a double murder that he didn't do. Mm-hmm. He was locked up for three years and he beat, he went to trial and he beat it. And I was in, I was in the courtroom with his mom when he beat it, when they said not guilty. And I remember the joy, the, in the pat and the love. Yeah, and I was yeah. also in the emergency room when the doctor came in there and told us that he was dead. And I heard that. That Man. shit just changed me. That mm-hmm. shit changed me, bro. It fucked me up. Like, I remember, like, the joy we had when he beat that because they really, he was going, like, if he yeah, found guilty, he would have been doing 40 mm-hmm. some years. But, like, the joy of him coming home and beating that and then being in that same, and being in another room with his mom and we not knowing, like, he got shot and took to the hospital and yeah. we in there waiting on the news and they came in and told us he was dead. Man, and that scream that she let out, man, that shit hurts that, that, me. Like, that, man, the and rest that's of your what life, made me man. Like, I'm yeah. going to push my message, man. If I don't care if I reach five people, man, I be getting on my Instagram sometime and I be like, look, y'all, just because it's hot outside, you ain't got to kill somebody, bro. Mm-hmm. Go do mm-hmm. something else, man. Do anything. Look, I, look, I'm i telling you, and I know we get into that time. You, I, I want you to enjoy that time with, with, the, with the young one as you get out to the game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to say really quick, uh, the music. How do you feel yeah. to this energy that you have? Because, look, that's the weird thing about this time period and being positive is that they come up with new terms all the time. They call yeah. me toxic positivity. I said, what do you mean toxic positivity? <laughs> what does that even mean? How you bring that in my world? I ain't never heard that. You didn't made that toxic. shit up because they made it up. That's why you never heard it because they made that up. <laughs> you trying to be too happy, nigga. You want, every, you want everybody to get money and get rich? What's wrong with you? I said toxic positivity. I said y'all is different. That's some different shit. <laughs> the music, bro, when it comes to this music, bro. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this. Just just about your music in general. So how are you kind of filtering this message into your music? What does that look like? What stories are you talking about? And then also, where can people find your music? 
And they can find on uh on you know, all music platforms, iTunes and uh Spotify, Tidal, all of that, man. And um my my YouTube is Lantana Easy. I drop like my music, I try to put it in there, man. I, I just try to be real in my music. I try to be non judgmental mm-hmm. and speak my how I really feel, like man, like well, I got I got a line in one of my songs and said when I was talking about my young dude, I was like, he ain't he ain't he ain't got a I can't remember remember what I said, but it's just like talking to him like I understand and I feel you. I feel where you coming from with that shit. But it just ain't it, bro. You're mm-hmm. gonna you set yourself up for pain and agony. Yeah. Like I just I be doing that, and then most of some of my music, I just it just be more like it be serious but lighthearted and just like something that people can relate to on yeah. a different level. It ain't just it ain't all. I ain't making no super conscious rap. I'm not. Right. I ain't finna, <laughs> At this point, though, what do you even define as conscious rap, though? Like, what is? I, it, I remember Fifty Cent said it. No, you know it's conscious rap, man. You talking about, you talking about like the the. <laughs> You know what the fuck conscious rap is. When them dudes be trying to, like, man. It's like, going it's too like, deep into it, the cerebral on the third eye. You, you, you talking about? <laughs> you going you to miss the mark. I'm trying to come to a way where I, a yeah. kid in the ghetto can hear me and be like, even if they don't want to mm. listen, it's going to be stuck in their brain. Like, man, Lantana said, man, get money, take care of your family. Don't mm. crash out, man. You know, you know what hurt. I feel like. You know what I feel like is a difference is that you're not talking down to him. You're talking straight out of eye with him and saying, "Look, I know." It's yeah. a difference, and that's something that even even I don't know if people would consider my music. I hope they don't consider it to be conscious music because I understand what I know that you're talking about. Because I've been to a, I've been, I've performed at thousands of shows. I know that yeah. avatar you're talking about where they get up there and it's like, "All right, bro," it's like, like they, they dress, they dress, they dress a certain way. It's like, "Okay, bro, they you read." You read. <laughs> it's like you read. I get it. You got a whole lot of vocabulary, but your message is being missed because your delivery is like self-absorbed. Your delivery yeah. is too much about your ego. Self-righteous. Self-righteous. Under- yeah. Like, what are we you doing? Don't really, you don't really understand why this young dude is like how he is. You don't, you, ain't, you don't really don't even give a fuck. You just want him to be. You you so educated. Mm-hmm. You ain't thinking how other people think. You only thinking how you would think. <laughs> My grandfather like, used to say, "You so educated, you stupid." <laughs> and some people be educated in these in these white educational systems. Mm-hmm. They don't even understand that they is programmed too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if, you went, if you went up through school and was great in school, and then went to a white like went to a white college or something like that. You ain't have even no time sometimes to even think for yourself. You just mm-hmm. learning what you had to learn because you're trying to do good in school. That part. So, like, you, if you don't have, like, with everybody with kids, you got to teach your kids outside of school or they going to be programmed as well and mm-hmm. programmed in, in every – and it might not be programmed to be a killer, but it could just be programmed to be a fucking robot with no empathy and no understanding – for people Man. who come from a certain background because you just you're gonna start feeling like you better than motherfuckers. I heard I heard a quote one time that said, if you don't get in control of the programming of your kids, because no matter what we do, that's the first programming we get is from our parents, right? Yeah. Uh whether you want to call it that or not. If you don't get in control of the programming, somebody else will. And yeah. and the older right. they get, they're gonna get in environments where like some of the things that I felt like and this is not no shot to my pops. I love my pops, but some of the discussions we didn't have until I got to my thirties. I had with somebody my age when I was 17, 18 about like girls or whatever the case may be. And it was like, do you, do you want that? Do you want that advice coming from somebody who's trying to figure it out just like me? Or do you want it? Or do you want it? I'm talking to my son. I'm talking to my son straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he going to get it from somewhere else. No matter what, like you want it to be straight up from you. (laughs) You don't need to do that. You don't need to talk to him about that. Somebody going to talk to him. Yeah. That part. (laughs) <laughs> you, better, you better talk to him about it like my pops man if he would have if he like once i started smoking weed if he would have just accepted it like put you like older people and older generations they cannot put themselves back in their shoes when they was that age mm. they always looking down from a of course you don't think like that no more you're older and you're grown mm-hmm. so they can't even remember how it even feel to be that age man that's what i that's what I, that's where i be coming from with young people like bro i know like like when his room with my son room dirty and how he feel, I'm still gonna get on his ass, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna be like you trifling, you're dirty as hell. The nah, shit travels with you. It travels up. with you. It, it it continues with like like that's once again that's programming. It's those kids that come up that say like, I can't do this because I'm stupid, and it's like where'd you hear that from? 
Well, my mom yeah. get mad. She yeah. tell me I'm stupid. Yeah. My dumb ass. Stupid. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm I, I just didn't know, man. I yeah. don't be thinking like that. Sometimes I tell my son some shit. He ain't listening because he, he, he can't pay attention right now. You mm-hmm. feel me? Mm-hmm. And I'm still going to give it to him like how I got to give it to him. But I ain't going to act like I don't understand. Yeah. You feel me? Like older people used to talk. Like even now. Like, man, I hate when I hear older people talk about the younger generation. Yeah. Like, man, it's, been, it's been murder rap. It's been freak nicks, booty hole brown shit. It's <laughs> been that. It ain't, they people acting like Sexy Red is some new shit. That ain't new. Is, that ain't new. That it's ain't new. been crazy. I done met a few you Sexy Reds in my lifetime. Crazy. I done met a few Sexy Reds in my lifetime that I'm like, oh, oh they man, finally man, got man. they finally got that avenue. Because you know that every rapper like that gets up to the mainstream, you ever notice they like an example of somebody you met along your pathway? You like, oh, that's that's so and so. For real, man, man, for real, it's a lot of people that <laughs> just like, and that's why they be popping off because there's a lot of people that's just like, just them. like them. Yeah, but that 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 point, I'm, I'm that's probably be my next. Yeah, yeah, all good because I know you got to bounce up out of here. When we appreciate your time, brother. Yeah, man, now that generational shit, like when we acting like, oh, my generation was this. Your generation just didn't have social media. That's mm. the only difference because I could go back. If them niggas in the eighties had social media, they oh would have been God. showing a crack in all the millions they had. They would have been doing that shit and doing the same shit in the nineties. Yeah. They would have been showing their guns and showing who they sliding on. Mm-hmm. If they had the internet, it would. It ain't no different, brother. They, they, it just ain't documented. Look, it ima- ain't documented. Hey, imagine yeah. pot with, with 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 Twitter. Imagine, uh, imagine, imagine Onyx imagine. with a live stream like way back when they was in the Onyx like early days when they was shooting up at the at the at the Source Awards. Like imagine that generation having that kind of access. Pac, Pac would have been going viral. Pac had so much on his mind and oh so much God. he would have said, but he would have been fucking it up. He would have been going yeah. viral. He would have been speaking. He would have had a blog. He would have had a motherfucker. <laughs> Tupac with a blog would have been had, crazy had, though. That's he crazy. Had to wait for the interviews and shit to speak his mind. Yeah, yeah, but Tupac with a blog, so you mess me up with that one, huh? Yeah. If he could have just, if Pac could have just opened up his phone like me and went crazy just any day he felt like it, his messages to this day would have been like a like a fucking a digital book. Man, and, and and even without it, still made that impact, which is why I, like I I. I applaud you because I feel like what you're doing is you pioneering something that's going to become the norm one day. And uh, you got my full on support. Any way that we can support the music that you're doing, uh, you want to come back and discuss that or you just want to have like, you know, you just want to politic on, on, a, on a topic because, you know, right now, another one that's really hot. I don't want to get into it. because I know you got to leave. But the whole uh, rappers should stop rapping when they get to, to their 30s. I, I did a reaction video to a clip and I'm like. Fam, they throwing everything they can at the people that got the wisdom who didn't went through they. Uh, you know what I'm like? They throwing young, everything the, to get them out the way, and it's like, what are we doing? We want the young, we want the young dummies, the young for ignorant that don't care yet to keep on rapping. But Crazy. you know that it been it been like that. I remember Facts. when I was when I was uh 17 and I was like selling weed and shit on the block, and it was a dude out there that was 23, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, get your old ass on. <laughs> I think back to that I'm like damn Bro it was 23 I was like 16, 17 And I was like Man you need to get his old ass 23 on. It's gonna be wait, Mark my words I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave on this one Mark my words Lantana There's gonna be a day That somebody gonna look up And be like Damn bro You 23 and still trying to rap It's gonna You're gonna, <laughs> you gonna think about this moment You're gonna think about this moment It's gonna happen yeah. Because they trying to make it A smaller window And I know why From a business aspect I can market to market to you all the way through your twenties if I get yeah. you young, and then I can keep recycling it. This is it's a it's a system on that one, but, but I know rap is no longer young. No, yeah, I mean, they, nah, you, know, nah. you, got, you got like people in their forties. That's that's why I be telling like the like to, to the people that's in the chat that's older and rapping. It's a whole group of people thirty and up listening that want to listen to your mm-hmm. music. That want to get in there and not hear a young nigga talking about sliding, bro. Yeah. So rap your shit to the people to your. Figure out who your audience is. If you try to go and reach and tap back into an audience that ain't yours, you're going to lose. You're going to continue Facts. to lose. Facts. And it's it's way too much talent out here that has access they never had before. Brother, I appreciate you. I genuinely appreciate you, not just for the, the first initial video, but the, the message you're pushing and also for choosing to come talk to us. You could have talked to a whole lot of other people, but you reaching out to me uh, is huge. And I don't think anything happens by accident. So, uh, man, I hope... Hope you you and your son have a have an amazing time out there. Any final words before we get up out of here? 
Hey, man, stay solid. Do not crash out. Your mama needs you. Your sister needs you. Your brothers, your sons, your greasy, greasy grandma, they need you. Do not crash out, man. Be yourself. Live life. Get some money on and have great sex. Do your shit. I appreciate you for bringing me on here, bro. Anytime. I'm going to definitely be up with you because I feel like, man, we we got, man, we could do some more conversations, man. And and, and I appreciate you for having me because I know it's something that I'm about to learn from you that you can tell me, put me on to this because I got to I gotta give it. I got to get my word out to people, man, because there's a lot of people that probably need to hear it, man. It's not, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when is my favorite quote on that one. So, yeah, man, we, we, we appreciate you. Want to respect your time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for choosing to tap in with us today i know it's an impromptu conversation i'm gonna leave this one up in case you want to have some clips to react to other than that y'all stay safe thank you for the commentary in the chat we'll talk to you soon all right